can a mother deliver a child without the labor pain is there any freedom that was obtained without a struggle would there be a success without any hard work it is true in our uh, life whether it is ordinary or uh, congenial life it consists of struggle and hardship often we forget that we live in the past glory because of some people their bravery and their sacrifice that we have the life we have today and also often we forget on the one hand the message of jesus christ that has impacted this world and the church as the carrier of this message of jesus christ and very often we need to be reminded the church as born out of or emerged from this message of jesus christ and so many people their sacrifice and their struggles today we live in the context we are experiencing that consequences of neglecting the message of jesus christ and forgetting what the church is made out of and the consequence is that we are disconnected from the community we fell into the trap of the individualistic lifestyle of the materialistic corporate world from our personal to our professional life we started to compromise our christian values once mahatma gandhi gandhi said to dr stanley he um jones a missionary to india that he has no problem with the christ of christianity his problem with christians he said that many of them do not live according to the teaching of christ there are so many gandhi so many gandhis would have turned away from christ because we set up a bad testimonies world is watching us we are expected to be living example of the truth and the power of gospel to be reminded of this let us see the reaction of jesus christ in the gospel that to, that was read to us Matt, mark 8 mark 8 verses 31 to 38 and what the gospel writer is saying and presenting jesus the son of man we see here immediately after confessing that jesus the messiah peter rebukes jesus for saying that the son of man must undergo undergo great suffering rejection and be killed in return jesus rebukes peter by saying go behind me satan we need to remember considering what most of the scholars uh, agree upon the date of gospel of mark mark is writing this when peter is already lived 
suffered and died as a martyr for Jesus Christ. And James and many disciples have done that. So the point here is the gospel writer is recording not only just to say Peter, how tempted and, and ignorant, but to emphasize that the mission of Messiah relating with people evidently involves suffering, even till dying on the cross. Thus Jesus comes out openly this is the first time he comes out openly and says, if any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. I just want to tell you quickly three things. The first one is anyone but one. Mark is using the rel relative pronoun relative pronouns in even in the other places he's using. Here we see if any, anyone or whoever. So to say that everybody is called to be followers. I really love that followers, instead of uh, discipleship, I would go with followership as I always, because it is inclusive as well as his goes, uh, people who followed, they followed till the cross. So what Mark is trying to say is everybody is included, called to follow Jesus. But the choice is one, to choose Jesus. That's what he emphasizes, which demands to suffer, willing to suffer. It is like NASA's mission um, to mass with humans uh, in 2034. It's a one-way route, no returning back. So anyone but one choice. All of us are called, but it is one-way route. And here we see the second part is die to live. First he says, deny yourselves. Saint Augustine writes, the first destruction of man was the love of himself. Prefer to this God's will. Learn to love yourself by not loving yourself. Learn to love yourself by not loving yourself. Denying is allowing God to do his will in and through us. So Mark is emphasizing the fact how Jesus as a human being fulfilled the will of God till the cross. The second thing that he emphasizes is to take up the cross. Here also we need to understand people are aware of cross. Probably when Jesus was uh, talking to them, cross was not that, um, you know, as they think about, as Jesus died on the cross. So now people know what Mark is talking about. So take up the cross is something that we uh, understood in the sense in our life. What is that? We may not die on the cross like Jesus did, but it depends on the time and the place where we are involved or live in. So that is more important. Take up the crosses wherever we are, contextually, timely, that we participate, involve, engage ourselves in the struggles of uh, injustice, oppression, and the inequality that, could, that is um, in our neighborhood or in our uh, context. The third is follow me. Uh, whenever I uh, look at this follow me, you know, uh, here, I remember the movie called Gods Must Be Crazy, two, the two. You know, the, in that story, it's, I, I just love that story, how um, Zizo's uh, father following the, the tire marks of the truck 
to find their children. He keeps running from the beginning of the movie. He'll be following the track. And the whole movie is about what he encounters as he follows to find his children. So many hurdles. He helps people. He go through un, um, you know, uh, prepared events. And finally, he finds the children. So it is something like that following, follow me is just running after it. We don't know what is going to come. We need to keep overcoming the hurdles. We need to be doing good things, but still we keep moving on towards that kingdom that is uh, promised by Jesus Christ. The great theologian Dietrich Bonhoeffer says in his book, The Cost of Discipleship, the classic book, if Christ calls, he calls us to come and die. If Christ calls, he calls us to come and die. That is following Jesus. And the third thing that I wanted to say, glorious suffering. Mark is using the title son of man in two ways. One is while predicting the suffering of Jesus Christ. And the other thing is, is coming in glory. That's what he says in uh, verse one, 31 and 38. The son of man must undergo great suffering. The son of man will also be ashamed when he comes in glory. To associate himself with the ashamed, that's what it uh, means. So it is uh, imperative that the son of man has this two dimensions, suffering and the glory. When we look at the Old Testament reading, Genesis uh, um, 17, God promises to Abraham. And uh, the promise is being said that he would, that nations would be blessed. And in the epistle uh, reading, we see Paul says that Abraham acquired that blessing through the righteousness of faith. That's what he says. And the, suffer, and the theology of suffering says the righteousness of faith is not a moral standing. It is not a character of a person. It is our relationship with God and his people. That is what it talks about. So it is that we need to remember that when we choose God, we choose the suffering as well as is glory. One of the things that I hate today, which is not uh, so much in the past, the motivational inspiring stories. Whenever I take uh, you know, classes for the kids in the juvenile detention center, I go and search for motivational and inspiring uh, stories. Most of the stories are talking about how I was poor and how I became rich. That is motivational and inspiring story. Story, We put pressure on our children that success is just earning money, becoming rich. No, it is seeking the way of Jesus, willing to connect with people. So we need to remember that church is us. I just want to conclude with one illustration. A pastor who took over a new church found always empty. People are not coming to church. He tried many ways to get people. People did not come. So one day what he did is he decided to conduct a funeral service for the church, for, the, for his church. So he went around, uh, uh, you know, sending notice pamphlets saying, and this Sunday we are going to have the funeral for our church. People were uh, wanted to know, people were uh, wondering what is this funeral for the church? And uh, on the day of uh, the funeral, so many people gathered, it was overflowing. And uh, people were wondering what is happening. And there was a big coffin kept near the altar. There was a big coffin. And after the worship, you know, the worship, the pastor invited the people to come and have a last look at the coffin, the church. And everybody who came front looked at the coffin, ashamed and went. 
because he kept a mirror inside the coffin. Everybody who came and looked at the coffin, they saw their own image. Church is us and we are called to follow Jesus, to, to extend that kingdom and it may demand suffering, hurdles, fight, protest and voice out to participate in that mission. Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.